Hello friends, welcome to Shiva Academy. This video series is mainly to address the questions in the comments that I am receiving in the comment section or through the mail. In case if the question needs a much detailed explanation, I would create as a separate video and I will add it to the respective playlist. In this video, we will see about 4 different questions that I have received till now. The first question is like, how to write a SQL to compute the cumulative sum? Let us see how to write a SQL to compute a cumulative sum of salary. So here is the uh, employee table which has information about the employee uh, of three different departments like 10, 20 and 30. Now let us see how to compute the cumulative sum of salary. So we can use the analytical function sum of salary over a simple over will just compute the sum of the total salary. If we add the order by class, suppose if I say order by employee number then it will compute the cumulative sum of salary in the sense the first row will be like 800 as per the order of the employee the first row will be like 800 the second row's value will be like 800 plus 1600 and the third row value will be like 2400 plus 1250 so like that it will just keep continuing till the end of the record so this will just give the cumulative sum of all the salary are all the employees in case if we want the cumulative sum uh, salary as per the department price we can use the partition by department let's say partition by department number so that we will get the uh, uh, department wise cumulative sum of salary so in this case it will it will do the cumulative sum only for the department 10 then it will start the uh, uh, cumulative sum for department 20 then the department 30 so this is one way of computing cumulative uh, salary there is another way by which we can compute the cumulative salary also so that is also in fact the uh, analytical query only let me just write the query you say over rows between unbounded preceding and current row so you need to put order by employee number unbounded preceding let me just put it here yeah. now if you see this is this is another way by which we can compute the uh, cumulative salary uh, in fact this is computing for the entire uh, uh, employees or all the employees let us just partition it by department number so that we will just get the same output so just for readability i am just aligning here okay now if you see there are two ways by which actually we computed the uh, cumulative salary let me just give alias here cumulative salary to and let me just give alias like cumulative salary one now if you see we are uh, computing the cumulative salary of uh, uh, cumulative salary of employees uh, let us see one more uh, much more practical question uh, so here is a table which contains the information about the um, transaction uh, so for easy understanding i've just taken a transaction of two different account so here is one set of account so here is another set of account which just has like a transaction date, account number, uh, the transaction amount and is it a debit or credit. So now we need to compute the accumulative salary in the sense like if it is a debit we need to add and if it is a credit we need to subtract from the uh, total salary. Now let us start writing the query to compute the cumulative salary here. First let me just select the columns. The first thing uh, if it is a debit we want to consider it like a thousand let's say it's like a deposit or if it's a credit let's say it's like a withdrawal we need to consider like a in a negative number first let us compute that value so we can use the decode so if it is debit let us consider the amount as it is if it is credit let us consider the amount into minus one so that we, in case if it is a debit we will just get a positive number here in case if it is a credit we will just get a negative number fine now we can use like sum of this 
over order by transaction date now if you see it will actually compute the thing as per the uh, transaction date but uh, however we want to compute this uh, uh, cumulative sum as per the account wise so let us partition it by partition by account number then order by transaction date let me just give a alias here cumulative sum now if you see for the first account it starts with 100 since there is a 20 credit it subtracts 20 from 100 so that the cumulative sum is 80 now 80 plus 10 90 90 minus 30 is 60 60 minus 20 is 40 so this is uh, much more like a practical uh, scenario where we will be using the cumulative sum of salary now let us see the second question like uh, uh, column level constraints versus table level constraint so here is a simple table like a student which contains like register number role number department and name of the student so typically like a register number will be unique across the college that means it will be unique for a student whereas like a role number will start from one and in each department so in this case a uh, register should, number should be unique whereas the combination of roll number and department should be unique that means uh, in like ece department there can be roll number one same way in cse department there can be roll number one but the combination should be unique that means one and ece like and then one and cse like that we need to enforce the uniqueness for the combination so first let us take the register number if you want to enforce the uh, uniqueness to register number typically we'll use the unique e constraint so there are two ways by which we can uh, define the constraint one is like by specifying the unique key as part of the column so this type of definition is like a column level definition there is another way by which we can enforce this using a table level at the table level definition so if you see here we are actually defining the unique key construct uh, unique key constraint as part of the table definition so this is the difference between like a column definition versus a table level definition in this case you can define either as part of the column or as part of the table both uh, solves the same purpose only but there is an advantage in defining as part of the uh, table level uh, that is for in case if you want to enforce more than one column then you will not be able to uh, define it as part of the column so in that case you have to define as part of the table only suppose for the second set that is for enforcing uniqueness between the role number to department number uh, if you want to create a constraint then we have to go ahead with the table level constraint only we will not be able to give define at a column level constraint so here is an example so here we can say you define the constraint as part of the table mention both the column name here so in this case the combination of role number and the department uh, should be unique so that is about like a column level constraint versus table level constraint let us see the third question like what is the use of select one in correlated subquery so here is a query which checks the list of department which doesn't have any employees so how we are checking is we are actually using the exist keyword and we are saying select one so in this case the intention of this select statement that is select one is not to select any data instead the intention is just to check whether the select query is returning or not so in this place you can say either a select one or select star or select abc or select null or you can say whatever you want so the intention is to make sure the select question the, if the select query executed and return some value then uh, the query will return the result let us see with few more examples so here is the same select statement so you can put either a star same result you will get or you can say null or you can say like one two three four five whatever you can say whatever uh, you want however in as far as it's a valid select statement it will return the same result set so since we are not selecting anything just for a simplicity we are just putting select one however you need to put the select one because the basic syntax of select statement itself is like select the column or a literal keyword followed by from class and the table so we will not you should not omit this one if you omit this one obviously you will get an error called missing expression okay let us see the fourth question why we use the inline view so here is a simple example where i am using the inline view as part of the select statement to display the department name 
see first of all the inline views will ease the uh, select statement because many small small things we can uh, implement as part of the inline view if you don't want to use the inline view then typically we'll use to create a plsql function and we'll call that function that will again uh, introduce like uh, context switching between sql and plsql engine and again it's like a performance bottleneck to avoid all these things and to make the make the logical implementation purely in the sql itself you can go ahead and use the inline view so here is another example for inline view which i am using it in the from class in case if you don't want to use this inline view typically we'll create a table which hold this information then you can use the table in the from class so to avoid all these things and to implement all the logical functionality in the sql itself uh, we can use the inline view if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new future videos interview questions sql practical version concept videos if you want any questions to be addressed you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail id thanks a lot for watching this video